Welcome to Talking Giants Player Profiles and Projections, Episode 1. Training camp has started, and what we are doing for the next six weeks, we'll have an episode every single weekday. We'll have two regular episodes, and three times a week, every Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, we will have two players we'll be uh, profiling and previewing, PPPs, offensive and defensive. And today, like we have started the last two years, the, the longest tenured giant, Sterling Shepard. Now, Justin, I'm not going to do hey, how are you's on this one, but it's the first player profile and projection. Hey, how are you? Hey, Bobby Skinner. Um, thank you for throwing it to me because this really is my favorite time of the year where it's the ramp up period where we are going to be either in your ears or in front of your face five days a week. We have, you know, we're giving you the opportunity. Certified you, freak. If you certify freak seven days a week, uh, wet ass P word, Ben Shapiro. Yeah, a um, lot of fun. Uh, ramp up period. Giants football's back. So, you know, you think the draft is the most fun part of the year. And I, and I respect that. It really is a lot of fun, but the thing that I, you know, thing that makes training camp the most fun part of the year for me is that it is the ramp up. And by the end of training camp, we're going to have football at the end of draft at the end of the draft, you still have months to go before football. So here we are PPPs five times a week. We're going to be in your ear three times a week talking about every single significant player on the giants. Um, start talking to me about Sterling Shepard. Let's do it. I love him. Sterling Shepard kicks it off. Sterling Shepard, he's five foot 10, 201 pounds, 28 years old. And like I said, he is on his sixth year with the New York Giants, the longest tenured New York Giant. He was it last year, and he's back again. In 2020, he played 12 games, had 66 catches, 656 yards, three touchdowns on a 73% catch rate, 9.9 .9 yards per catch. Average 55 yards per game. The most yards per game of any player, including rushing, if you want to combine rushing receiving, like if the you know the Wayne Gallman's of the year, nobody averaged more per, per game than Sterling Shepard. He is in a very weird position with the New York Giants, where he is the best returning wide receiver. But guess what? They signed Kenny Galladay. Supposedly, he's moving back to the slot where we think he is, where he, he will be. Darius Slayton plays the outside. But he's in a weird spot where he's the best returning receiver but he's moving to a different position and they drafted someone at that same position in the first round with Kadarius Tony. This is a, this is going to, this is a very weird year for Sterling Shepard for Daniel Jones, most trusted player. Yeah. And the fun thing about Sterling Shepard is that he doesn't have to move positions necessarily. Now, does Jason Garrett and the Giants and Joe Judge really want somebody alternating between outside and slot? And does that actually happen in the NFL? Does some, do you want somebody to have one certified spot, certified freak? How many times are you going to say that? Do we want somebody to have one certified spot and solidified spot? I don't know. But, I mean, hey, in my you know uh, fan brain, why can't Sterling Shepard ha have snaps on the outside with Kadarius Toney in the slot? And why can't Sterling Shepard be in the slot when you want to have Darius Slayton and Kenny Galladay as your two outside wide receivers? Why not? And you're in 11 personnel most of the time anyway. You know, maybe like some 60% of the snaps. Maybe that goes down if you're, uh, you know, if you're winning some games and you're in some more running formations. But, you know, Bobby, I'm a big guy, you know, at some of the advanced, stat advanced stats and, and stuff like that. But I think they're – Sometimes wins and losses, uh, at the end of the day, that's what it kind of comes down to. And in 2019, the Giants went 4-6 and six when Shep was on the field, 0-6 oh when he's not on the field. And in 2020, the Giants went 5-7 and seven when Shep was on the field, 1-4 and four when not. Nine of the Giants' 10 wins the past two years have come when Sterling Shepard was on the field. Now, you know, th that stat could be taken without context. Is Daniel Jones on the field for some of those wins and losses? I don't know. But, hey, <laughs> there's a pretty strong correlation to Sterling Shepard being on the field, the Giants have a decent chance at winning. And really, when Sterling Shepard uh, was without OBJ and when uh, Eli left, when those two guys kind of left town, the way he was as a player and who he was as a player, that really did change. He is a low average depth of target guy. He's a low yards per reception guy where he was one of the, you know, one of the only wide receivers to average under 10 yards per reception last year. You know, he's a high catch rate guy. With Daniel Jones, his catch rate was 80%. I know it was 79.2. I'm rounding up to 80% because that's a fun, it's a fun whole number. 80% catch rate with Daniel Jones. He's reliable on third down. So Sterling Shepard is very, very important as a football player. And I'll let you talk about, you know, more of like, I guess, you know, some film stuff or some stat stuff, wherever you want to go. But he's a very, very important player and very, very important to this team's success. Yeah, well, 
if it's .5 or above, you're supposed to round out. If it's I, you know what? Because we're a Giants fan podcast. I'm rounding up Blair, like a whole. I know eighty percent just sounds better than seventy nine percent. It does. It does. Um, I we'll talk about him in the slot. Um, because seeing slot doesn't mean a hundred percent of his snaps are in the slot. Even when he was in 2018, it was only at 60, you know, 65% of the time. Let's, let's talk about him just as a player. He's the best route runner on the team. He's the most reliable. Like you said, the 80% catch rate. And you saw it in the Philly game. Like when he came back, it's like, okay, he's, things are opening up a little bit different because teams are having to respect Sterling Shepard. And there's one route that really sticks out to me for Sterling Shepard. And that is the whip route. And that's essentially where you run a slant, you show slant, and then you whip back out. Now you can keep it going. It's you know it's a lot like the stick concept where you can read what the defense is doing. But that route set up so many things for the Giants' offense when he came back. It set up vertical plays. I mean, you know that Evan Ingram drop against Philly, which we ended the game. That route was set up by a Sterling Shepard whip route. You know the Dion Lewis throw uh, on the sideline against Philly when we won. That was set up by the corner playing up on the Sterling Shepard whip route. It was a huge uh, converter on third downs. Like um, Shep, uh, when he was uh, targeted on third down, 14 of 19, 13 of those were conversions, you know, 73%. Um, all others were at, at 66%. Um, two of his three touchdowns came with the whip route versus Baltimore and Dallas. Both of those touchdowns were on that whip route. Like that kind of stuff, it sets up, it brings two guys in the zone if to cover it, which – allows open guys down the field, which we should see more with Kenny Galladay, should see more with, with Darius Slayton not getting corner or wide receiver one treatment. Um, and when they cover it with one, it's a chain mover on third down. It's with the way Sterling Shepard runs it, it's essentially uncoverable. If you play outside leverage, he's going to slant on you. You play inside leverage, he's going to whip back out on you. So, And Jones trusts Sterling Shepard to let him you know, do that route the right way. Like There's a very good connection with those players understands mesh con- like concepts when is this it you know when they're blitzing when he needs to turn around and he's even like an underrated like on those back shoulder sideline catches like oh we yeah saw that's, some of that yeah. with, even with colt mccoy like he's underrated on that like i would love to see some more of that type of stuff like he's a really good route runner and like i said he was the best wide receiver on the team the last two years yeah i agree with everything that you said and the the fact that Shep did have that connection really, I mean, with both both quarterbacks, but most notably, he's had that connection with Jones the last two years. Shep is not a contested catch guy. And really in this Jason Garrett offense, you kind of have to be. And even if you're not a contested catch guy, you're kind of forced to be. But those back shoulder throws, I think that is most evident that you have a very good relationship between quarterback and wide receiver, where even though this isn't this guy's primary strength, the fact that they had that working and it was working pretty well, I think more towards the second half of the season than the first half, um, it was phenomenal. And I'll tell you this, you know, I hope this doesn't turn into a Darius Slayton versus Sterling Shepard conversation. Cause that may be a camp battle conversation, but Shep produced 11 total plays of 20 plus yards last year. 10 of them were receiving the one was rushing. And that was week 17, a touchdown against the Dallas Cowboys one more than Darius Slayton. So the 11 total explosive plays was one more than Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton. Darius Slayton played in all 16 games. Played 87% of the snaps. So Sterling Shepard. I I I I'm going to repeat the same thing a million different a million times because I did it last year and he showed it on the field when he was on the field in 2020. He showed it. I think Sterling Shepard is super super important. I think he's the second most important wide receiver on this team behind Kenny Galladay. For sure. Now let's let's talk about him in the slot. Now. He only played one game where he was majority a slot receiver in 2020, and that was against Washington when Golden Tate was suspended. Um, Because even when Golden Tate missed games at the end of the year, they're using Dante Pettis in the slot. Um, So he played 71% of the slot in that game, six catches, 39 yards, 75% catch rate. He had a carry for 18 yards in that game. Um, His next highs was uh, 39% versus Week 10 versus the Eagles. But for 2020, he 35% lined up in the slot. 65% 65% out wide. Now, the last time he did line up in the slot majority, I went uh, weeks one through 12 in 2018 before Odell got injured. He played 65% in the slot. Um, in those 12 games, he had 52 catches, 638 yards, three touchdowns, um, 12.2 yards per catch, which is basically 4.3 catches, 53 uh, yards. It's essentially the same thing he did this year. 
um, but with one less catch per game. So yeah, and the, but more... the, the, the main difference there, Bobby, and this is, you know, and obviously it's different offenses too, and it's different quarterback as well. The yards per reception, that's a pretty big difference. You know, 12.2 and, you know, around 10, you know, in retrospect, it may not seem like that much, but that's a pretty, that's a pretty big difference. So um, you keep, keep going, keep going, well, keep exploring. I know you mentioned, and, and I agree with you that like, Hey, he's not going to be playing a hundred percent in the slot. You know, there's going to be reps where he's on the outside, Tony's in the slot, and then he'll play in the slot and Slayton will play on the outside. But I do see his number being around there, like 65% lined up in the slot. And then they'll have two wide receiver sets where he's out there, you know, you know how they rotate guys. But I do see that as like 2018 Shep is I think what we should expect. We should expect that type of role for Sterling with him being a couple of years better. I don't know. I mean, and that's the, that's the big thing of, I, I don't, I mean, like I said, 12.2 yards per reception. That's not, that's not who Sterling Shepard has been the last two years. And he hasn't been a slot wide receiver. And typically, you know, the way that my brain works, the way that my brain works is saying your, your slot wide receiver is more of a possession wide receiver. So Sterling Shepard has almost been this possession slot wide receiver who was inevitably just lining up on the outside way more than he's lining up in the slot. Am I wrong for thinking that your slot wide receiver is mainly like your possession guy and is not going to be creating a ton of explosive play. Am I, am I, bad for yeah, things that bad I, brain we're we're agreeing i'm I'm not saying like he's going to reproduce 12.2 yards per catch he could but what i'm my what i'm saying is that like 65 percent in the uh, reps in the slot is what i'm saying yeah like you like you don't think by end of year do you like i don't see a a, a world where it's like okay shep's on the back on the outside tony's in the slot and slayton's kind of getting his role reduced Tony's Tony's the big X factor here. Tony is the very big X factor because in a, I would prefer Kenny Galladay, Sterling Shepard on the outside, and Kadarius Tony and that explosivity there. That's that is the eleven personnel that I would prefer wide receiver wise because I think utilizing Sterling Shepard as that security blanket with Daniel Jones and having that under you can do that from the slot. You can. You can do it. Then where does Tony just do, uh, cause the whole point is also they're gonna rotate. To Tony's Tony not don't well. expect Tony to start, is what I'm saying. I know, I know, I know. But Shepard's versatile, Shepard's important, and I think that can only be a it's it's only going to be a good thing for the, the Giants this year. And the only thing is this question may be answered that we're going back and forth on. There's only been two years of Sterling Shepard's career where he's played over 65% of the offensive snaps. So I'm kind of expecting at this point Sterling Shepard to miss time. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we he's he's had injury issues. Yeah. Um. So let's talk about contract. Usually, we kind of go over these guys' contract in the beginning, but I want to finish it off with this, and we can we can be quick with this. Two th now he's playing through this year, 2022. He has an 11.5 million dollar cap hit last year's contract with two million dollars of dead cap. If you're betting, does he play 2022 under that contract? Is he traded or cut, or does he get his contract renegotiated and extended? 28 um, years old right now. So it'll be 29 next year. This is the last year of his contract. 2022 will be 2020. I mean, this is 2021. So yeah, this is, so this is this basically, this is the blit second to last year. Okay. Um, you know, I feel like every giants fan who want, who maybe thinks of a player won't be on the team the next year, they would like to say trade him. Um, he could be traded in the off season. He could be traded in the off season. Number. He could be traded in the offseason. So I'm willing to bet that he will not be on the team in 2022. Yeah, just like I said, it's a weird position where he's the best returning player. Although when we talked about our wide receiver review at the end of the year, I think they, I said I think they should invest more in Slayton going forward. He's younger. He plays that outside role. And then they ended up drafting Tony. I mean, the writing is on the role. I know, well, I know Joe Judge had talked about like, hey, like he, Joe Judge called Sterling Shepard after and, and, and talked to him about yeah. the Tony pick. So yeah. and that's another indicator. Like he's going to be playing the slot this year. Yeah, he didn't call Darius Slayton. Yeah, yeah, and Slayton even like like admitted that he didn't he didn't, he didn't realize what had Shepard or what Joe Judge had said about Shep. But he's like, yeah, you didn't call me. So Shep, I is going to be playing majority in the slot. Sixty five percent is where I would see that number, like it was in two thousand eighteen before Odell got hurt. And that is a Sterling Shepard player profile and projection.